question we want to address is what does responsible tourism mean for the Middle East and North Africa? And we're going to have two speakers. We're going to start with Peter Stubbs, who's Director of Compliance for the Jumeirah Group. And he's going to be talking about the hotel and what they are able to do to make that hotel more sustainable. And also, I hope, Peter, to talk about your turtle release and rehabilitation program. And then Tamara Withers, following on from that, is going to talk about the natural environment in Arabia in particular and the opportunities that that presents for tourism. I think it's fair to say that the wildlife potential of tourism in Arabia has been largely neglected over the last 10 years and perhaps it's time to look at more development of natural heritage and certainly that's the theme for the second panel today, looking at the opportunities for cultural tourism and business. The important thing to remember about responsible tourism is that it is about the business of tourism as much as it is about the objective of sustainability. So we're really trying to bring both of those issues together in the presentations today. We've, I've asked the speakers for talk, to talk for not longer than 10 minutes each which means there will be a good amount of time for questions and discussion after we've heard the two presentations. So please be thinking hard during the presentations about the questions you'd like to ask. Okay, my name is Pete Stubbs. I um, work as the Director of Compliance and Safety for Jumeirah Group. Um, thank you, Harold, for giving myself and Jumeirah the opportunity to talk about how we manage our corporate social responsibility um, our environmental projects and what that means for us within the Middle East and North African region. Um, as per the brief, I'm just going to cover a little bit about what we do. Uh, that's the nice bit, that's the easy bit because it's very tangible and it's very nice talking about it because we're very proud of what we do. Um, we're going to go and talk a little bit about why we do it. So I want to try and uh, make the business case for environmentalism, sustainability and responsible tourism and I'll, I'll share with you some personal thoughts that, that I have on, on why it's important for us here in, in Dubai and the Middle East and, and, and linking to that um, why it makes um, business sense as well. So for those of you that don't know Jumeirah, um, uh, Jumeirah is a very strong uh, hospitality brand within the UAE. Uh, we're UAE based and we're owned by Dubai Holdings. Um, we have 21 properties um, throughout the world, uh, representing over 6,000 keys uh, over, um, and, and within the UAE we have 12 properties. We, we also, in addition to hotels, have um, a leisure business, uh, Talese, and also a group called Jumeirah Restaurant Group, which is standalone restaurants within mainly the UAE. Uh, we have an amazing uh, colleague base of 30, over 13,000 uh, colleagues, and as you can see on the screen, uh, representing 125 nationalities. Uh, I think actually within the UAE alone, uh, maybe up to 90 nationalities. So we have a very diverse uh, workforce. Um, we are a five-star hotel um, brand. We have the iconic Burj Al Arab as our flagship site, and um, we have our mantras stay different. So one of the things that we really um, have within our portfolio is an amazing estate of assets and uh, environmentally if I just put that into context that, that allows us to do some very creative stuff um, in those assets as well. So in terms of our strategy um, our environmental and sustainable initiatives sit very much within our corporate social responsibility platform. Again you can see on screen that that has five pillars sustainable business, environmental protection, community welfare, colleague welfare and resource conservation and specifically the area that I look after uh, includes the environmental management system and we're very proud to say that across our portfolio we've used the Green Globe standard as our environmental management system. I, I know that Guido the CEO of Green Globe is here this week, um, he may I guess pop up and uh, join the sessions later but he's certainly a guy that uh, knows a lot about environmental issues within the hospitality industry specifically and if you've got any more questions about Green Globe he's the, he's a guy to speak to. I just wanted to very quickly run through some things that we do, some projects that we've delivered 
on environmental management and sustainability. Um, you, as you'd expect, they include all of the common things that you'd expect around energy management, waste management, resource use, um, supply chain and so on. Um, so I'm not going to go through the topics if you like, but what I am going to do is give you some examples of what we've done actually within the last six months within those categories. Um, as I said to you, we like to be very action orientated. We, we like to uh, walk the talk and uh, again I'm going to take you through some of the big projects that we've done to deliver that uh, within uh, both the Middle East and also broader than that as well. So in terms of resource conservation then clearly energy is a, is a big ticket item. Harold asked me today to focus on the economics of sustainability as well so clearly um, there's a huge carbon impact of energy but, but, but equally a lot of the projects that we deliver around sustainability and efficiency deliver savings as well. We had a, a big project that went live three months ago which was the Jumeirah Beach Hotel, Burj Al Arab and Madinat Resorts all converting to district cooling so that was the culmination of a two-year project that uh, we delivered with Diwa and Empower to provide um, district cooling, of, of course a huge uh, energy uh, use within our portfolio and our expectations are around the saving uh, between 10 and 20 percent year on year once the system is fully embedded and, and working correctly. Um, I've put on there low energy lighting is a pretty simple thing but for example the Burj Al Arab has over 95 percent of its lighting is low energy. I, I admit that we have a lot of lights in the Burj Al Arab because that's um, how we choose to light uh, the landmark building but um, my, my, my point here is that year on year we're looking to reduce the impact of that uh, within our business. In terms of waste management, not a particularly um, graceful topic but one that's very very important to, to Dubai. I think we're working very hard with our um, providers to uh, improve our uh, recycling rates, our capability uh, and of course um, particularly within the region the focus on, on food waste as well and the photograph at the bottom you can see on the right is uh, an example of the composters that we've started to put into our hotels to convert uh, waste uh, material into usable um, uh, fertilizer and, and composted material that we use within our landscaping business. Again, at the start of this year, we, we like to support Dubai's vision of innovation. And I was uh, very privileged to host the start of the electric vehicle road trip at the Burj Al Arab in uh, late January. Um, this is promoting alternative fuel vehicles, electric vehicles within the region. It also coincided with the Tesla launch within Dubai as well. So as I said, it was a private initiative, if you like, but it did link to a, a government-sponsored um, launch of the uh, Teslas within the region. And the, the bottom right there is my colleague Rafi trialing out the new um, electric vehicle charging units that we've uh, put across uh, six of our sites within Dubai in the last three months. In terms of community support, uh, a key focus of our CSR program, but I think the, the, the key point I'd like to make here, we try and make the um, community programs work on many different levels. The, the photograph in the bottom right is a Dubai holding sponsored um, initiative around UAE Water Aid. Um, it's both a community project and an environmental project. And very proud to say Dubai Holdings has, has put in the, in the region of 5 million dirhams into that project to make it successful. We also have a very active wellness program for both um, the community and the colleagues. Um, I did the swim around the Burj about four, four weeks ago, uh, 47 minutes by the way. Um, which uh, the winner did it in 22, but at least I made it round. But th th again, the point I'm making here is that uh, Jumeirah particularly encourages its colleagues to get involved free of charge in these initiatives. It's a great way of um, keeping the health and wellness agenda within our business. And as you'll see at the end, I have a slide that says if we have happy colleagues and healthy colleagues, we have happy guests as well. I guess let's move to what I consider to be probably our marquee environmental projects. A fantastic environmental, ecology, biodiversity project, if you like, that we've been running from the Burj Al Arab over the last uh, decade. It's the Dubai Turtle Rehabilitation Project. Um, the aim, as you can see, is to rescue, rehabilitate and release back into the wild any injured or sick 
turtles. The birch has become a centre of excellence for this activity uh, within the region. And the interesting point here is that, that we don't do it for guest purposes. We, we have no, we are not allowed to exhibit turtles within our aquarium, within uh, the, the hotel. That's, that's not permitted within the region. It's an activity that happens very much um, behind the scenes, um, but, it, but it's an amazing uh, initiative. And I have to say, probably for me, some of the happiest days of my working life have been involved in this project, particularly on the, the turtle release days when we release them back into the wild. Just to show our commitment to the project, uh, you, you may be aware we opened a new hotel at the end of last year, the Al Nassim uh, Phase 4 part of Madanat Jumeirah. And the graphic that you're seeing on screen actually are the five new rehabilitation pens that we put within the project. So we had an inland waterway, we had space to um, put wildlife within it, and our team were able to um, use that for the um, rehabilitation project. And it's been very successful. You'll see in the middle there we have an education area where we invite up to 4,000 children every year to, to participate in the project. Here's a photograph of the amazing team that we have. Um, we, we have it led by a guy called Warren Baverstock. He's a marine biologist, um, all-round top guy, very dedicated to this initiative. And he, he and his team of six colleagues deserve great credit for the, the work that they do and the, and the tireless work that they do behind the scenes to, to look after the, the turtles. What you can see bottom left there, I think these are hawksbill turtles, the most common ones that we um, rehabilitate and top right I think is a green turtle um, and, and, and what, what we're known for now within the region is a centre for excellence to rehabilitate the, the, the sick turtles and we have uh, maybe on a stormy day we may have up to uh, 20 or 30 handed in over the, 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 the week after as they get washed upon the beaches in the, in the region. It's not just about putting them back in the wild as well. We genuinely are a centre for excellence and uh, have, um, are at the forefront of research in how these creatures are surviving. Um, the graphic that we show here is the most famous um, turtle that we've ever released. It's called Dibba. Um, you'll see that uh, occasionally, if we release, say, 40 turtles, maybe five will have um, GPS tracking on. And, and you can see that this is our record breaker. It, it turned right out of the Arabian Gulf across the Indian Ocean and actually ended up um, around 8,000 kilometers away on the Indonesian coast. Um, that's not common for the turtles that we see. Often they stay within the Arabian Gulf. But, but what this technology is allowing us to do and allows the team to do is genuinely start to track the behavior of the, the turtles that we release as well. And, Warren and his team are published, um, have published scientific research on the matter as well. And, uh, and, and I guess just to highlight this, uh, they've released uh, exactly 1,089 turtles back into the wild over the last 10 years. And as I say, the, the real nice benefit we have is an open house policy to our guests and invited schools to, to join the education program that we have at Alma Sea. And, and that invite goes out to everyone here today. If you're looking at this thinking, what an amazing project, um, come and speak to me afterwards. We can uh, arrange to, uh, given that you're the um, dedicated uh, guys that have joined today's session, then we can arrange to um, link you guys up this week to some of the team and, and we can take you through that in more detail in person down at Almasin. So I'm just going to move on to the, I guess, the last part of the presentation, Harold, which you asked about why we do it. Um, what's, what's the the business benefit. Um, so let's start with economics. This is in no particular order, but um, if the accountants within Jamira are watching, then I guess they'd like me to put um, um, economics first. Qu quite simply, um, efficiency equals money. Uh, we, we know that through careful planning and uh, realistic return on investment calculations, we can make savings in the long term. I'm probably not talking two or three years uh, when it comes to things like energy, but if you take the um, district cooling that we have in the bottom right there, then, then our, inter our return on investment will come. It will come in time. It will take uh, many, many years actually, but it was the right thing to do for, for our business. We also do it for guest and colleague satisfaction. We are in the business of fun after all. That's what we do in hospitality. Um, and CSR projects make 
our guests and our colleagues smile. That's a good feeling. And we know from our customer satisfaction surveys that guests that are engaged in the property, are engaged with our activities, uh, will give us the best feedback. Um, Jamira is very much about personal attention and emotional engagement and CSR projects really, really drive that home. It's also guest expectation. I've, I've phrased it, we need to offset the luxury. I started by saying we know that the Burj Al Arab uh, is a big monster of a building. It's probably why we're all here today, by the way. Um, 20 years ago, as it was being built, um, it, it put Dubai on the map as a hotel destination. So uh, we make no apologies for that. What, what we have in the, have realized in the last 10 years specifically, we need to make sure that we manage that more sustainably. Um, and we are trying to deliver five star plus with a conscience. In terms of individual travellers, I think they're reassured when they see what we do. In terms of commercial travellers and the CNI business and events, it's sometimes a prerequisite to tender that we have these credentials. And of course, the infamous millennials and the new generations, they have an expectation that this is how we manage our business. Uh, and, and a phrase that um, I learned from Harold last year at the conference around experiential travellers. Um, this isn't just about staying in a hotel, swimming in pools, this is about experiencing your destination, learning the culture and, and so on. And that, I think the final slide for me really, we, we know, we recognise as an organisation which is at the heart of Dubai and the UAE, that we have a responsibility to support the UAE in its vision as an innovation leader. We, we, we'll, I think. Tomorrow we're hearing from Expo 2020 that sustainability is a key pillar within that activity. We have the Dubai Plan 2020-21, the, the Jumeirah properties actually feature in the, in the icons that, uh, that, that link to sustainability. Again, recognising that we're at the heart of what, what happens here in Dubai. And of course, this year is the year of giving. And uh, uh, some of the, the work that I've done, some of the... Um, information that I, I've showed you is very much about um, uh, corporate giving and, uh, and also linking to happiness. So again, happy colleagues, happy guests, equal good business. And then finally, my point is I know that DTCM, uh, we've joined them in recent workshops uh, in terms of how they're going to start to embed sustainability within the hotel classification um, process. So uh, what's interesting there for me is that um, sustainability measures will be as relevant as the uh, offers that we, we make to our guests. It will be embedded, I think, over 23 or 24 clauses within the classification system and, and we very much encourage that because it means that it uh, makes it intrinsic to our business. So I think uh, that's my final slide. I've got um, uh, far more detail to share with you one-to-one -one if uh, after and, and maybe over the, the panel session, but hopefully that's delivered on the brief to talk a little bit about what Jumeirah does as an organisation within the region and, and also the importance for that as well within our, our business model. Thank you. P Peter, thank you very much. But just before you sit down, you slid very quickly past the community water project. Could you just say a little more about that? The, com the community, um, the UAE water aid. Yeah. Um, Harold, you've caught me on the hop a little bit. I mean, there's a chance that you know more about it um, than me, actually. Um, uh, are, are you able to give us a bit more insight into that? Um, no, I'm not, unfortunately. I was counting on you, Peter. But anyway, okay. I'll let you embarrass me. Yeah, that's not a good start for answering a difficult question, is it? But um, No, well, but, I'm here to ask difficult questions. But I, I guarantee by, by the end of... In the next 10 minutes, we'll have a good answer for that. Um, it, it's a project which Dubai Holding, our parent company, take the, the lead on, actually. But um, Can I just remind everybody that Peter invited you to go and see the turtles? I was taken last year. It is a really unforgettable experience. And it's, that invitation is not often made. And I think somebody who's here all the way from South Africa, from a company that specialises in whale watching and shark diving, which I'm not so keen on, but the whale watching, you should certainly take that opportunity up. Tamara, can I ask you to come and tell us about your view from a wildlife perspective? This obviously follows up quite nicely from what Peter was talking about with the turtles, 
But I do want to come back to that broader agenda when we get to questions in about 10 minutes' time. Tamara, thank you. Thank you, Harold. Peter, it was great to hear more about Jamira's initiatives. Um, and I'm going to take a step back now and give you um, a broader view um, from across the country um, in terms of responsible tourism and how Emirates Wildlife Society, in association with the Worldwide Fund for Nature, um, is approaching tourism, but not just tourism, really about biodiversity conservation and saving UAE's natural heritage. So a little bit about us. Some of you might be familiar, familiar already with the World Wildlife Fund, um, but we are actually here as a, registered as a local nonprofit uh, conservation organization focused on biodiversity conservation. We're the only federal, uh, federally registered nonprofit organization focused on conservation, meaning we work across all of the Emirates. Um, and we have been here for the last 16 years. Uh, we are here to ensure the long-term prosperity of the UAE and the country's uh, environmental resources to support the sustainability, and I mean by sustainability in this terms, the economic sustainability of businesses and the communities that rely on those environmental resources. For us, while you might think of us as an environmental organization, we very much embody all aspects of our of social responsibility as well as economic responsibility and sustainability in work that we do. It's part of all of our projects. So we work on a variety of different programs across the, the country and we, climate change being one of them, largely because of the impact it has on biodiversity, not just here in the UAE but around the world. We also do marine conservation and terrestrial conservation. In terms of terrestrial conservation, we're focused on habitats. We developed the first mountain national uh, park in the UAE and the first national protected area. Um, we also work on marine conservation. Um, we have focused on a number of projects. Right now we're doing coastal habitat mapping to understand where are those mangroves, where are those sea grasses, where are, um, where, uh, are the different areas that we need to conserve here in the UAE. The UAE has an immense um, opportunity to offer a lot to the world in terms of understanding biodiversity. It's a very unique environment, but a lot of it hasn't been studied, and we're one of the organizations working here to better understand what, that, what the UAE has to offer in terms of biodiversity conservation. So we're also working on, um, this year, we focused on hawksbills in the past, and right now we're working on green turtles. Why green turtles? Because that actually tells us a lot about the other species in the sea, such as dugongs. So all of our programs um, are very broad in nature and have a focus on having a large-scale impact. We always have three elements to how we focus on biodiversity conservation. One of that is research. We're a scientific-based organization. Why does this matter? It matters so we can identify the right solutions, understand what the issues are, identify the right solutions so that we can provide policy recommendations. We're a very small organization. There's only 40 of us working on these immense challenges. So the information we do gather has to have a big impact to drive big change uh, to, reduce the, to reduce the environmental pressures. There's also an element always of education and outreach, as you saw uh, from Jamira's example, how powerful that can be in terms of engaging their guests in the community. And this is something that's always part of our projects. We work with the government and we work with private sector um, across the UAE to provide that public outreach and uh, community engagement on environmental biodiversity. And because of a lot of this work, we are, as I mentioned, a very close partner uh, of the governments. We work the Ministry of Climate Change, the Ministry of Economy, the Ministry of Energy on the Emirate level. For example, here, just like Jumeirah, we work with Dubai Tourism. We are one of the founding members of the Dubai Sustainable Tourism Initiative, invited by Dubai Tourism. Um, tourism is a very important uh, sector to WWF, not just because of the impact that actually has on biodiversity, which is the obvious part, but because very much what Peter highlighted is their ability to outreach to the community and to their guests. They can drive change so much further because of the nature of the business within tourism. Um, I get hung up sometimes just focused on the hotel side of tourism, but really tourism, we need to look at the entire value chain in terms of responsible tourism. We need to look at what's happening from the moment a traveler starts to design a trip and to form a trip. How are they making decisions? How are they getting to the airport? What the airlines are they flying? The transport in local countries? What tour operators are they using? You have to look at all aspects of that journey to understand what is influencing travelers and how can we reduce the impact of those experiences from travelers and the businesses associated with tourism. 
So it's much broader than just the hotel industry. Um, one of the reasons I find, at least, and you can correct me later, Peter, that, but you've highlighted it really nicely in your own presentation, is why tourism is coming to WWF to work. We have very strong relationships globally um, across the world with cruise lines, airlines, number of tour operators, many hotel chains. Largely, they come to us because of their, um, I find, one, it makes business sense, like we've highlighted today, in terms of their resource management, but also because they want to show support for government initiatives, and I find that particularly true here in the UAE. Um, and also, and on a local level, again, Emirates Wildlife Society prides ourselves in collaboration. We understand that a lot of these issues are still new to businesses, and we very much want to be seen as a partner where we can provide resources to support businesses in actually reducing their impact. For us, it's not about saying, okay, businesses uh, doing something wrong and they have to go fix it. We're here to identify those solutions working alongside with government and business to identify what's going to work best with them and ultimately achieve the results we need to see to uh, conserve biodiversity. So as I mentioned, responsible tourism is along the entire value chain. But we also, in terms of the hotel industry, need to not look just at the management. We end up getting caught up talking about the management of properties. But in terms of managing biodiversity and responsible tourism, we need to take a step back from the moment a hotel is conceived. Where are we putting this hotel? What, how is it impacting the environment? How can we reduce the impact? How can we compensate for that impact? Looking at the design phase, looking at the construction phase, and then of course, ultimately, the management of, of the hotel. I think hotels have done an excellent job in terms of resource conservation. They've really uh, run with it in terms of improving efficiencies around energy and water conservation, engaging their engineers, their, their staff across the hotels, even their guests. One area that is really lacking, um, not just with hotels, but I think across the whole spectrum in tourism, is really on that biodiversity side. How do we engage travelers on biodiversity? How do we have them understand why it's important to conserve biodiversity? How do we have them develop an appreciation and an awareness? And I think Jamira provides a great example of bringing your hotel guests in and engaging them and connecting them to the environment. What we need to do is see more hotels doing that. Of course, not every hotel is going to have a turtle rehabilitation program. And oftentimes I hear from city-based hotels, well, we're city-based, so we don't, well, the land came from somewhere and it had an impact on biodiversity at one point in time. You do interact with the environment and have an impact on the environment. I think we have a responsibility, even as a city hotel, to provide our guests an understanding of the biodiversity of the surrounding environments of the countries that those hotels are in. I think we need to see more and more happening from hotels and throughout that value change. How can airlines participate in this? How can airlines develop a sense of appreciation and awareness of their flyers, of the biodiversity in the destination countries? How many of you can name a species native here outside of the Hawksbill turtle to the UAE? I'm sure few of you can. We need to develop more of an awareness among the general public and the employees that are working in the industry around why biodiversity is important. I'm sure this doesn't come much of a surprise given that we're the World Wildlife Fund. But this is a real opportunity and it's not just a cost to the business. What I'm excited about is I see this as a huge opportunity to provide added value as a destination. I think there's an immense amount of resources here in the UAE that we can uh, take advantage of environmental resource and environmental experiences to add value to the visitors that are coming here. And I don't think this is just unique to the UAE. I think this is an opportunity for the entire region to take advantage of and something that's not being done just of yet. We're looking for a great new exciting experience which is wonderful. And now this is an aspect that we can build in. Connecting people to the country, connecting people to the culture, to natural heritage, um, through biodiversity is an amazing opportunity. And this is something very much that we're focused on here uh, at Emirates Wildlife Society. We have a dedication to preserving the UAE's natural heritage, understanding what biodiversity is here, what species are here, what habitats, what makes them special, and how they contribute to the UAE. So, it's also for us important to understand what is the problem. What are the challenges to biodiversity? And we have to recognize and understand what needs to be done or what those challenges are. So looking at the overconsumption of resources, how, while hotels in the industry have done a lot, what more can be done focused here on the UAE to reduce that impact? 
looking at, like I mentioned, siting, natural land conversion and degradation. Also the air pollution and noise that's often associated with uh, development. Of course, littering and waste production, water pollution and carbon emissions. And still here, even in this, there's that element missing around the, uh, the education and awareness around species. So what needs to be done? One, we need to invest in local research, supporting organizations like the, the Dubai uh, Turtle Rehabilitation Center and other organizations across the UAE. Um, understanding the impact. We need to understand locally what's happening. We have a lot of great local or international studies, but very little research is actually happening here in the UAE. Um, and definitely not enough to, uh, to leverage this opportunity we have uh, around UAE's natural heritage. Of course, we always need to work towards identifying solutions. Um, and I know with Emirates Wildlife Society, we do not work alone. As I mentioned, we're a very small organization. And we work very closely with industry bodies, private sector companies, and the government to identify what those solutions are. For example, like Jamira, we also work on the Dubai Hotel Classification Standards and providing our expertise um, to improve those standards. We're also here, and we also think not just us, but uh, education programs that, uh, like at Jumeirah are important to inspiring private sector. A lot more work needs to go into getting people excited about the environment and UAE's natural heritage. Those of you who are here are probably already converted, so how do we, can we instill your passion and your interest and your dedication in others that aren't here uh, attending this session today? Um, and again, uh, talk, coming back to why this makes business sense, and to summarize, one, this is an immense, incredible opportunity for the UAE. There's a lot here to offer in terms of UAE's natural heritage from habitats to unique species such as dugongs, dol dolphins, whale sharks, sea turtles, um, and even uh, understanding more about the falcon, the oryx. Um, there are even a lot of species that are undiscovered that uh, can provide exciting experiences for the travelers coming to the UAE uh, as a destination. And it also creates an opportunity to give back. Um, oftentimes I hear from organizations we work with, we want to give back, but we don't know how. Um, and there are a lot of uh, ways associated with environmental conservation in the UAE that uh, provide opportunities for organizations to give back and to really take advantage of the year of giving and uh, make a, an, an important impact on the country and saving its natural history. Thank you. Thanks, Tamara. I'm, I'm going to take the first question myself, if I may, because you both, in a way, raised a similar question which is, what is the relationship between the wildlife and the tourism opportunity from a commercial perspective? Peter, when your accountants start challenging what you spend on the turtle rehabilitation, how do you make the case for it being business sense to do? Can you, sorry, Hal, can you repeat the question, sorry? Yeah, when, when your accountants say, look, this turtle rehabilitation thing is costing us a lot of money, Yeah. How do you make the case for continuing to finance what is quite an expensive process? If you go and see it, you'll be very aware that a lot of resources are disappearing into turtle rehabilitation, which is hardly poor business with Jamira. Yeah. So it's, it's a good question. Um, our, our accountants are human beings as well, and they... Um, they get it. If, uh, you know, we, we invite our corporate team to our turtle release activity. We have three or four a year. And um, I think from an emotional perspective, uh, when they get involved and see those turtles scu scuttling down the beach into the water, wh when they see the, the guests um, so actively engaged in those activities, um, then I, I think that, that, that goes a long way to, to, to make us... Uh, Get the signature on the on on the for the cost of the project. I think the other point is, as I said, um, we do realise that morally, in a five plus star environment, uh, we have a reputational issue that we need to offset. I refer to it as offsetting luxury, and we can't have one without the other. We we are an organisation that that recognises that it on one hand delivers um, amazing experiences. Uh, for some people, uh, once-in-a-lifetime experiences that we make no apology for. But at the same time, 
uh, we need to make sure that we do that in a responsible way and and you can't have one without the other and and our and our and our uh, um, financial guys understand that Peter that's an excellent answer to the question but what it doesn't do is explain why so few hotels actually engage with any species conservation project at all. Mm. Mm. So why don't they? Look, I think uh, it's a complicated project. I mean, we, we, we have uh, world-leading scientists running that project. They, so they, they, at the same time, they're, they're offering... Uh, um, they're doing a service in terms of keeping our aquarium, which is part of our signature restaurant, working as well. So there's a very compelling business case on both sides. Um, the, the amount of back of house work required is, is very significant as well. Um, so I, it's not an easy project to run and, and maybe to answer your question, Harold, many organizations are put off because it is complicated. Um, in, but in many ways, th those organizations have got to at least give it a go and see how, see how they get on. And, and, and I think Jameer has been, and of course, uh, the, 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 the leaders of Dubai have been very brave at making some very ambitious um, projects within Dubai. Let's just look at the 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 buildings let's look at the palm these are very very decisive ambitious projects um the, the dubai turtle rehabilitation project was another example albeit slightly different of where they they dare to be different they, they dare to to do something very innovative and, and the net result is a fantastic project but tomorrow i accept all that Peter, but tomorrow you don't have to have such a complicated project to make a difference and yeah to you. is an exception they stand alone in terms of what they're able to do, I think, in terms of their rehabilitation project. And what I would hate for hotels and others in the industry to think that it has to be this complicated and that you require this much investment. We look at practical solutions all the time at Emirates Wildlife Society of ways any organization, any business, any hotel can um, get engaged in environmental issues, uh, whether it's climate change or biodiversity conservation. It doesn't have to be something at this level. Um, we want to see practical solutions uh, within the industry. And I wanted to come back to something you said. You were asking about the business case. And I know that's what we're focused on here today. And um, I think, and even us at Emirates Wildlife Society, we're always talking, well, what's the business case? How do we justify saving turtles to a business? And I think one of the things I'm, I'm starting to reflect more on is it's maybe it's, yeah, it has to make a little bit of business sense. We can't be costing businesses money as a result of it. But I think it's also we need to talk more about passion and connecting people to nature. And that's really what is amazing. You know, there are a few opportunities, still too few opportunities in the UAE to actually connect the community, whether it's guests or tourists, to nature to develop an appreciation. And oftentimes when I'm sitting with organizations and businesses and decision makers, and if you look at some of the big companies in the world that have developed this, where this is core to their business strategy, it's because their CEO or chairman has a passion. They're divers, they're hikers, they're, they, they understand, they develop this appreciation. Um, it's not only because it's going to make them money. Um, it, that's not always the number one driving thing. And I think we need to do a better job at connecting people to nature. Um, and even as our organization, that, that's a struggle. There's we need more in the hospitality and tourism industry, more infrastructure to be developed so we can provide them access. It's not like South Africa, which is above and beyond in terms of providing people access to nature. How do, can we develop some of those things, get people engaged in the orcs and the natural habits here? How can we bring but, but them out tomorrow, to the bodies? Tomorrow, that won't really do as an answer, will it? Because it seems to me that you've got fantastic wildlife resources here. By anybody's standards, yep. that is an iconic photograph behind yep. you of a wildlife experience which could be had in this part of the world. Yeah. It's been developed in South Africa because people see the commercial advantage and it's a highly profitable industry yeah. in South Africa. Yeah. Why has that not happened here? I, I just think it's an untapped opportunity. Uh, we need to develop the infrastructure to provide them the opportunities to go out and see the oryx. We, we need that developed here still and I just think it's an unrecognized opportunity. Sorry, I've taken all the questions. Is there anyone in the audience who'd like to ask a question? Particularly about Wales. Okay, I feel a bit 
like on the spot like you know <laughs> yeah so we're a company in south africa yeah that is by the best well watching and shark french diving we're the, we're the first fair trade certified um marine company in the world for for responsible tourism and we work with dr harold um yes um, I must say, it's my first time in Dubai. I don't know much about wildlife around here, and I would love to come and see the turtles. Um, I'm not sure what I should ask about one else, Doctor. <laughs> Is it possible to see marine wildlife here at all? Uh, yeah, actually, you can, oh, marine wildlife, when one go out into the mangroves uh, in Abu Dhabi, I know. I mean, do you know of any? We have, there's a number of providers. Sorry, uh, in terms of uh, organised tour, Harold, or uh... yeah, I mean, if you, if you arrive as a tourist, if I came to your concierge, yeah, the yeah Tamara, and said, I'd actually like to see some wildlife. Yeah, what would your concierge say? I said, would they laugh? Well, they'd send them to our aquarium first, <laughs> um, of course. No, I said day two. Where would I go on day two? Well, we we have the Ras Al Khor um, sanctuary, yeah. which. But I, I think this is just highlighting uh, a point that you've Please. made, which is there is untapped yeah. uh, activities here. There's a, uh, there's a great business opportunity for those tour organizers that, that want to divert their vehicles from doing dune bashing, which is pretty much what um, most tourists do here, into something a little bit more experiential, a little bit more uh, green. Uh, I mean, that's. The, I mean, there will be examples, of course, of of where people can do that, um, but it's much harder to find. But but again, I think uh, we're, we're in a very modern city here. But it seems to me there's a great business opportunity for the tour operators to really get involved in. Just to twist the knife a little. In Britain, people spend a lot of money to go and see birds of prey flown. Yep. Yeah. You have some of the best. Arguably the best birds of prey Here. hunting yep. in the world, this part of the world. You have fantastic camel racing, yep. which I can go and see in Australia. But here? I have a question. My, I'm not sure if you can answer it. Um, okay, so before I came to Dubai, I, there was like one thing that everybody said in South Africa that we should do it's the dune dinner. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have enough time, but my concern is, I mean, in South Africa, we're not allowed to drive on dunes um, mm -hmm. due to conservation and the uh, you know, plantation and everything around here. So how, how does that work in the responsible tourism way, going out for dune dinners on a regular basis? From what I know, just from my conversations with Dubai Tourism, and that this is something they're looking at in terms of responsible tourism, tourism here in the Emirates. Uh, and how uh, dedicating certain areas uh, to those desert dinners um, and trying to reduce the impact around those. I'm not sure about the other Emirates because each Emirate is regulated uh, slightly different, but I agree there is a great opportunity there for responsible tourism and for hotels in terms of vetting who their suppliers are and their tour operators are um, and when they go out and have those experiences. And I think uh, it's difficult for a tourist to evaluate these necessarily um, but also what kind of experiences when you go out there. Uh, June bashing, sure, I'm sure is entertaining, but to really understand the desert and the importance it is here culturally, uh, natural history-wise, natural heritage-wise, um, I'm not sure what tour operators even offer that sort of experience uh, in, that, in that natural way, uh, without belly dancing and other things that they think. I think there might be a misunderstanding also of tourists here and about what they're looking for. Um, but yeah, more opportunity. Of course, the kind of tourists you get will be determined by yeah. the kinds of products that you offer. Yeah. So there's a, it's an inevitable relationship yeah. between the two things. You're not going to get wildlife tourists until it's available. Sure. It is available in this part of the world, but it's quite hard to find Fine, it. Yeah. Um, and it's not an obvious place for wildlife tourists to come. I want to close the session here. The next one, which is on cultural tourism, is looking at the other set of issues around what, again, I think is a missed market opportunity, which is the rich cultural heritage of this part of the world and how difficult it is for tourists to access that. In a way, it's the same problem as the wildlife problem.
But could we just thank our two speakers, Peter and Tamara, for that session? Thank you very much. Thank you.